Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My name is George Coles and on this episode we're doing predictions for 2023. These are just some predictions I came up with for the world of wrestling in 2023. Most of them are probably going to be wrong. Just a fun little exercise. With that being said, let's jump right in. The first prediction, we're going to take them kind of chronologically. My first prediction, Kazuchika Okada beats Jay White at Wrestle Kingdom 17 for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. This one to me is a no-brainer. Wrestle Kingdom kind of feels like the culmination of the 50th anniversary of New Japan, which went on all this year, and it feels like this is the end of the celebration. Who better to represent your company going into the next 50 years than Kazuchika Okada, a guy who already could be argued is in the Mount Rushmore of New Japan Pro Wrestling, and probably by the time it's all said and done, be the top wrestler they've ever had there. I also think that this would be a good point to either end a Bullet Club altogether or reorganize a Bullet Club, whether that be under Jay White or somebody else. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think some of the stuff that Jay White is doing with his Bullet Club is fantastic. However, I think the group has got bloated and it's lost its global impact. It's lost its importance. With that being said, this would be a good time for a reboot. Maybe trim the roster down, trim the Bullet Club down to maybe six to ten people, get rid of some of the the extras that are not necessarily needed, start over with a new year. Just my opinion. Now next up, one week later, on January 11th, we have Soraya, who's looking for a mystery partner, going up against Jamie Hayter and Dr. Britt Baker on Dynamite. The mystery partner is going to be Sasha Banks. Again, there's a lot of signs pointing to this. Sasha being advertised for Wrestle Kingdom or appearing at Wrestle Kingdom. Apparently, her contract is up at the end of the year. This would be an easy fit for her. I could also easily see this being Naomi. Being Naomi and Soraya have connections already, and people have watched them on Total Divas as friends. But I do believe if you're wanting to make a splash early on in the year, and you're in AEW, the biggest free agent available, men, women, or otherwise, is Sasha Banks. She's the biggest ne needle mover you could add to your company. I would definitely do this if I was Tony Khan. And I know I've mentioned that the, the AEW roster is too big at this point, but when you have a chance to sign someone like her, this would be like an NBA team having a chance to sign Steph Curry or Luka Doncic. You make room for superstars. Just like in the NFL, if Patrick Mahomes was available, your team needs to make room to put Patrick Mahomes there because he's that important. He's that good. Same with Sasha Banks. She's that important. She's that good. She's someone that will bring viewers to the company. I say it's a no-brainer to sign her. Hopefully it's what they do, but we'll see. But coming from that, our next two are going to be about the Royal Rumble. First, Hiroshi Tanahashi and or Jay White will be in the Royal Rumble. We're seeing WWE make some concessions to let Carl Anderson go to New Japan Pro Wrestling. It would be safe to assume that New Japan Pro Wrestling would be sending something back in return. This would be a perfect opportunity. They don't necessarily have to lose, but they can make an appearance, make the headlines, make something big happen there. I could easily say Jay White coming out officially having a Bullet Club member who's actually current Bullet Club on the show. Jay White has said that the Good Brothers and, and AJ are officially Bullet Club, even though it's not recognized on WWE. This is a chance for WWE for once to finally get to recognize Bullet Club without saying the OC or the Balor Club or any of their other hints at Bullet Club without actually being able to use it. They can use Jay White and say, here's the leader of the Bullet Club. I think it would be a great deal, especially showing the world that the new WWE regime, which they're already showing, is willing to open up and willing to open their door to let wrestlers go other places. Nakamura is going to wrestle in Noah here in a couple days. So to me, I think this would be great. Now my second Royal Rumble pr prediction, not only does Cody Rhodes return, but he wins the whole thing. There are rumors that have come out in the past couple days that either Cody is going to wrestle Seth Rollins for the World Championship, 
at WrestleMania, or if The Rock doesn't appear at WrestleMania, Cody Rhodes is going to wrestle Roman Reigns for both championships. With the trajectory that Cody was on last year prior to injury, I could see that that is what they were building to. The question here is, has he carried the momentum? Has he kept the momentum? Is the crowd still going to go crazy for him eight months later? Have they forgot about him? I know he was just on Monday Night Raw, but a lot of the hype about Cody was Cody coming from AEW to WWE, the first major defection going that way. So what is the crowd going to do when this happens, if this happens? I think Cody is on the very short list of people that can beat Roman Reigns for the championship, and I think this would be a great place to start that build to do that. Now going from that, going to Cody's former employer, CM Punk is going to return to AEW, and he is going to get into a program with the Elite. At the time I'm recording this, there have been some rumblings from a podcast that Dax Harwood has that kind of shine a light on a little bit of different views of the the all-out situation on the CM Punk version of it, and there were some interesting things that he said. One of the things is, after the fight, he had talked to Punk, and Punk had seemed to let everything go. Which, if that's true, that's fantastic. At least we know one side has put it past him, and I could see him easily be willing to work a program. Now, if the other guys, the elite, If they're willing to do this, you're going to have a big, gigantic, huge story. Whether it be CM Punk versus Kenny Omega, or CM Punk and FTR versus the Elite as a trio, I think you have the makings for one of the biggest money matches AEW has had. You have some of the bigger stars that they ever had, whether tag team or solo, going up against each other in a story that most people think or know is real, that's going to cause buy rates. That's going to cause people to tune in. They're going to want to see what happens. Is this going to go off the rails? Is this going to turn into a shoot? Is it even going to happen? For that, I think there's money to be made. If both sides could get together, I think Punk is definitely going to come back and he's going to wrestle against the Elite. Going from that, speaking of the Elite, at some point during 2023, a contracted WWE wrestler or talent is going to wrestle against a contracted AEW wrestler or talent. Now I say or talent because, let's say Mark Henry wrestles against someone from WWE. Mark Henry's not necessarily a wrestler in AEW. He's a backstage promo guy or vice versa. Let's say someone, for lack of a better name, Corey Graves wrestles an AEW talent. That's where we get the talent thing. I've mentioned it already on this, but I feel like that door is open at WWE. Their willingness to work with other companies. There'd be no bigger story in wrestling than if the two biggest American companies work out something, whether it be on an in- indie show, whether it even be low-level guys or girls working against each other. Let's say WWE calls AEW and says, hey, we want to do something with Rollins and Reigns. Can we get Moxley for this? And then AEW says, yeah, that's great, but we want to do this, and we want to bring Cody back for a match. Can we get Cody? Maybe there's a talent exchange there for at least a match. I think it's going to be wide open. This is probably my craziest prediction, but I can see it happen with the way everything's been going. Maybe it'll be something that happens in New Japan. Maybe FTR versus the New Day or the Usos in New Japan is going to happen. Or a three-way with FTR versus the Usos versus Bishamon, which would be great. Anyway, I think it'd be an awesome thing. I'd love to see it. Craziest thing on this list, but I think it would it could happen, and I hope it does. Next up, we have, speaking about Forbidden Doors opening, the Forbidden Door pay-per-view 2, or the second Forbidden Door pay-per-view, we're going to see more companies involved. Whether that's Stardom, whether that's Impact, whether it's WWE, or NOAA, or DDT, or All Japan Pro Wrestling, AAA, CMLL. I think to top the first Forbidden Door, we have to open it up the door even wider. We need to bring in people from all different companies. And I know it would be a logistical nightmare once you get more than one or two companies involved. Who goes over, who wrestles who. But yeah, let's leave that to the people with the making the big money to decide that. I just think it would be an awesome thing. Even if it's just bringing stardom into it, it would be worth it. I know that AEW's tried and has worked with DDT, has worked with NOAA. New Japan Pro Wrestling's not against working with NOAA or DDT or even Gleet to bring in their wrestlers. So why not do this? Then there's Impact. 
Impact has worked with both as well. Why not bring some Impact talent in for this? Just my opinion. I'd love to see it. As you can see, a lot of my predictions are crossovers, which is kind of interesting where, where I think wrestling could go in 2023. Now, my last prediction, there is going to be a major AEW wrestler or talent that signs with WWE. Someone's going to defect, and it's going to be big. And it's going to be on the level of Cody Rhodes. It's going to be someone like Miro, someone like Malachi Black, FTR, one of those people. And I don't know the contracts status of any of these people. I'm just throwing out names that are on the level that I think it would be. One of them people that has been pushing the upper echelon, maybe even someone that's a younger talent that they that's obviously been pushed to be a big star eventually, like a Jungle Boy or a Darby Allen. I could see one of those talents, once their contract is up, going, hey, I'm going to go over here because they're offering more money a better opportunity and I haven't really been used on TV like Miro or even FTR who hasn't been used on TV the way they should maybe they go back to WWE just my opinion I, I could definitely see it coming in the landscape as being one of the things that's definitely going to happen this is probably one of my slam dunks of the year the only thing I think that could stop it is the length of contracts maybe we don't get a big star but I think with all the rumblings of unhappiness that we've heard from certain people all the rumored contracts to be coming up one of them has to go that's just my opinion with all that being said let's smash that like button share the video subscribe if you haven't if you made it all the way to the end give me your craziest prediction for 2023 in wrestling if you're watching this i appreciate you it's been a great 2022 hopefully 2023 is going to be even better both in the wrestling world and for this channel. I appreciate everybody that's tuned in. Have a happy and safe new year. With that being said, my name is George Coles, and you've been watching Heal Heat.